Yo, what's up YouTube? My name is Danny James and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do some wavy Bronx Trail text effects inside of After Effects. If you do end up enjoying this video, kindly give it a like and hit the subscribe button in case you're watching me for the first time and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss any of my uploads. Let's jump into it. We're in After Effects and I'm going to be referencing d -Tang's opponent music video for this. I'm gonna just play it back so that you can hear what he says. Okay, so he says, free tea dot almost done with the sentence like, right off the bat, what you want to do, you're going to go for a text tool and then write the first word that you just heard from your song. In this case, I'm writing the word free because he says, free tea dot almost done with the sentence. It's advisable to go for a font that is quite heavy. I'm using a play pretend font. Here it is. You want something that is a bit heavy like this. You can also toggle this to enable boldness or extra boldness for your texts. Now, once it looks like this, you want to change the color to a red. Predominantly from these videos, I've seen a red font on it. Now that the text is in red, we only need to add a few other animations to make it look and give us the feel that we need. First, you want to go to your effects and get a glow. The inbuilt After Effects glow won't cut it for this. So you want to use some third party glow like the Red Giant Universe, you can use the Sapphire Glow. I'll drag in the Red Giant Universe and you can immediately see the difference in this without and with it. And then I'll increase the threshold just to reduce the intensity. If that is too much, you can again go to the intensity and reduce it manually so that you have a mix of the glow and the text itself. So this looks like a good point. I'm using an intensity of 0.7 and a threshold of 81 without the glow with the glow that looks good now you want to add one more effect from the presets and that's the typewriter it's already under the animation presets so just drag it into that text also chop that text so that it occupies a very small range and then hit U so that you can see the typewriter range selectors from trial and error i find 10 frames to be a sweet spot for this so i'll go one two three four Okay, up to this is 10 frames. So for the range selector, make sure that the second keyframe comes up to here. You can also easy ease them. I'll mute the audio so that it just appears like this. It has that typewriter effect. Okay, now once that is established, you need to add a wiggle for it so that it's a bit bubbly. So hit P so that you can see the position keyframe, hold Alt while clicking that stopwatch and then type in wiggle six and then 60. From child and experiment, I found that this is a really good range, wiggle of six and then 60. You can try playing around and see the different outcomes that come from changing these. Now it looks something good. So he was saying free T dot almost done with the sentence. So once you've done something like this, you just need to duplicate this text and then uh, replicate the same thing. So I'll hit Ctrl D twice and then squeeze these ones to my right. And then on this other one, I'm going to double click on it and then write T dot. If you go to the end of the animation, that's when you will be able to, you should be able to see the full word. You can again shift the position so that it's not predictable. It needs to change from one side of the screen to another one like that. And then he says free t dot almost done with the sentence. You don't have to put one word for each. So for this other one, I'll even enlarge it so that it occupies a bit, a few more frames. I'll hit you so that I can see the second keyframe for the typewriter. And then I will rename the text almost done. Okay, put it right there. Go again to your characters and change the size so that it accommodates your comp. And then I'll duplicate this one. I'll also trim this one down, go to the next area. And then for this one, hit U so that I can see the second keyframe. He said almost done with his sentence, something like that. Remember, you can play around with different parameters like rotations and all that. You don't need to go step by step with this one, just use this as a guide. So I'll tilt this just a bit. And then I'll trim it right here. And then I'll also hit you, take that keyframe to this end. And then he finishes by saying like. So I'll duplicate this once more, come to the end, hit you, put those keyframes a bit together. And then I'll also trim this again and then change the wording, write like. 
in capitals. I'll change the rotation so that it's at zero. I'll also enlarge the text since this is just one word. So this is the kind of versatility that you want from your text effects. Okay, now I haven't synced everything properly. I'll just enable the music and then you can see what it looks like so far. Yeah, that looks good. I'll only clean up a few bits. Remember, these texts can also overlap like that. If you want it to come a bit earlier, you can put it on top of the other one ever so slightly. And then I don't like the separation between these two words. So I'll go back to my characters tab and then reduce that separation. And then I can now even increase the size of the text and then change just a few things a bit. And then I'll go to the last one. I think it looks good. You can even duplicate the last one like this. I'll hit Ctrl D and then put the other one right below it or right above it. And then I'll change the color of the texts. You can even have a white for it. Okay, now I'll play everything from the top so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, before we wrap this thing up, I'd like to show you some additional things that you can add to spice this up. So I have my like, which has the red. Just go to your effects and look for a drop shadow. Drop it on that. And then just go to the settings for it. Increase the distance. And then you should be able to start seeing something right here. And then increase the opacity for that black. If it's black that you want to use, you can have the black. You can see the difference when you don't have the drop shadow. And when you add it like that, and then you can use this direction to determine the direction in which that black ensues. So just play with the distance and you should have something concrete. Change the shadow color if need be. And you can have more possibilities to this. I'd even leave it to this sort of yellow thing. It even looks good like that. So I'd paste this effect to this other word that is right here. Okay, and then I'll change the color for this to a black maybe. Yeah, so it looks really dope like that. I'll copy this drop shadow that has the black shadow to all these other texts that we just worked on. You can drop it below the glow. It's totally fine. So it really gives it a different element, which is really what we're going for. Then one more thing that you can do, you can also add keyframes for opacity, scaling and position just to alter all these. I have this text right here. I'll hit P, I'll hold shift and I'll also hit S so that you have position and scale. Right in the beginning of this layer, I'll enable these keyframes. I'll scale it down. I'll alter the position so that it comes from somewhere here. And then I'll push those keyframes even before this layer appears. And then right at this point, I'll drag it here where we wanted it to be. And then I'll scale this up about a hundred like that. And you can easy ease those keyframes and it has a good animation to it. It starts popping up. So you can do this throughout your entire sequence with all these text layers and you should have something really concrete. You can also add opacity keyframes if need be and play around with this one. And last thing, you can go the extra step and go to your effects and look for a CC radial blur and then drop it on either one of your texts, change it to a fading zoom and then increase the amount ever so slightly. So that way you'll have some animations that have extreme motion blur on them. So just reduce that amount if it seems too much anything at 15 should look good and you can paste this effect on all other text layers if you need to so i've pasted it on all other text layers and you can run it back from the top and see what it looks like you guys can experiment with other variations of these try different text colors you can also try different fonts. Uh, you can also change the wiggle expressions to see the different outcomes that come from changing this value. By doing a quick 
Google search it will show you that the first number in the expression represents the frequency of the wiggle that is essentially how fast it appears to shake and the second number represents the amplitude of the wiggle which is how far it moves. So just adjust these numbers however you'd like to make your layer shake dramatically but slow. Go around and play with the different text effects and see what you get with these. Just go wavy with these and you can have a bunch of different outcomes from these. My name is Danny James. See you on the next tutorial. Peace.